The dia, when lit, emits light, derives energy. It is this very energy which is a life force which sustains us. Each wick being lit is passed from one to another, symbolizing the sharing of knowledge. Each wick being lit today is a prayer for global peace and solidarity. Honorable President of India, Sri Pranab Mukherjee Sahib, Honorable Minister for New and Renewable Energy, Dr. Farooq Abdullah Sahib, my colleagues, Mr. Amit Kumar, Ms. Mili Majumdar, Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It's indeed a great privilege for me to uh, welcome such a distinguished gathering, and particularly uh, the Honorable President of India, who we have the privilege of having with us for the first time since he assumed office as president of this nation. His presence here, I think, is symbolic of the importance he attaches to issues related to sustainable development, and particularly the use of energy, water, and other resources in an efficient manner. The reality is that this is a country where building activities are taking place at a very rapid, in fact, at an accelerating pace. And therefore, it is particularly crucial that we get our designs, we get our technologies right, so that we ensure that the stock of buildings that we create are really not locking us into a pattern that might be unsustainable and inefficient over the life of these buildings. We know that the stock of buildings that would be standing in 2030, a large majority of them are yet to be built. And therefore, we have a unique opportunity to ensure that whatever is going to be constructed is done in a manner that incorporates the best features of efficient design. And of course, we also have an opportunity to retrofit existing buildings by which we can ensure that energy use, the use of other resources, particularly water, can be created in a manner, can be done in a manner that is totally sustainable. I would like to also emphasize the fact that it would not suit us and the conditions that exist in India for us to replicate designs and follow the same standards that have been established in the developed countries. Our conditions are very different. The price of energy that we face is distinctly higher than what it was in the case of the developed countries when they were at similar stages of development, or even today, in terms of the cost of energy and other resources relative to income levels in the developed world. But we have a major challenge, because demographic change in India will require that we not only produce materials, create buildings in a sustainable manner, for an ever-increasing population, but also do it in such a way that generations yet to come will not blame us for having been totally irresponsible. If we look at the past growth of the urban population in this country, in 1951, it was barely 62.4 million. In 2011, according to the census, it was 377 million. In other words, it had increased over six times. And if we continue with rapid urbanization, then clearly we have some major challenges ahead. And I believe that if we were to ensure that our buildings are energy efficient, water efficient, it will lead to establishing a pattern that gives us energy security and water security, and would also allow those who are otherwise not likely to get access to modern forms of energy being able to get the full advantage of these opportunities. There are therefore very strong imperatives for the use of energy, water, and, the, and other resources efficiently. And may I refer to President Obama's State of the Union address. 
just to emphasize the fact that even in the developed world, changes are likely to take place. I quote from his address where he said, I'm also issuing a new goal for America. Let's cut in half the energy wasted by our homes and businesses over the next 20 years. We have to set some goals and create a vision for the future, whereby in the next 20 years, we really establish a pattern of technologies, of design, and of construction by which we stand out as the most efficient nation on Earth. In this respect, may I conclude by saying that not only do we need a vision, we also need to put in place policies by which incentives and disincentives are created that would ensure movement in the right direction towards a higher level of efficiency. And this has to be done not only at the level of the central government, but down to state governments and local governments, because this is where I think we can bring about a motivation and conditions by which we create green designs, green buildings. And I want to thank uh, the Honorable President for giving us the privilege of his presence, which is a great source of in inspiration. And I believe all the participants of this conference who are here will go away deeply enthused at your presence, sir, which we value enormously. Thank you very much. Retreat, please. Rashtrapati Ji, Dr. Pachori, Ladies and gentlemen, I see before me young India. One day on your shoulders will be responsibility of running this country in one form or the other. India gained independence after a great struggle. It wasn't easy. Millions suffered. But finally, that day came when the first Prime Minister of India raised the national flag at the Red Fort. Democracy is not easy to maintain. But there is no other better thing in this world than democracy. To you I appeal, hold it dearly. There will be many waves that will try and upset this democracy. But so long as we hold together from one end of India to the other, with all the diversities we have in religion, in climate, in every form, yet we are united, Mr. President, for the future of this nation. We must hold this dearly and see to it that those forces that are trying to uproot this democracy and this nation never succeed. We're very grateful to you, Mr. President, for you came to this conference. I have just come back from a beautiful part of India called the Lakshadweeps. Beautiful islands that God has given us, no doubt still very poor, but hope that they will also rise. But also at the same time, fear that the global warming, if it continues at the speed that it's going on, those islands will disappear. And not only will those islands disappear, many other islands in the world will disappear. Rashtrapati ji, I remember when Dr. Bachori said about the glacier melting with the global warming, and people made a laugh of it. 
but I have seen as a child living in Kashmir the way glaciers have started disappearing. That I am afraid, Rashtrapatiji, a time may come. The great rivers that you have seen of Brahmaputra, Orchinab, and Ganga and Jamna may just be trickles, and people that will come after us will tell them that one day these rivers were mighty rivers, which are nothing but canals now. If we don't wake up now, if we don't move in that direction now, of not only saving India, but saving the world, for India alone cannot survive, nor can the world survive without India. And therefore, we must start thinking, how do we save this earth that God gave us? For there is no other place you will go to. Don't dream that one day our children will live on Mars or live on some other island. Be grateful to God for what he gave you and protect what he has given you. We destroyed his earth. Time has come when you young people have to restore it back to its original level where we can breathe fresh air, drink fresh water, and yet be grateful to that Almighty for his greatness. Mr. President, it is with this in our hearts we feel that your presence here is of great importance to us, for your father of the nation. And we feel that time has come that unless we use modern methods, either the solar energy, the wind energy that God has given us, the water that he still has given us, and the heat that we have, so that we can save ourselves from CO2 emissions which have destroyed this earth. This we can do. If this very conference which deals with green buildings, we take seriously. Unless we take things seriously and start thinking that we must now change so that our future and the people who are not yet born, their future is safe, we will never be able to save what God has given us. I am grateful to you, Your Excellency, for having come. It shows how you feel daily how to save this earth. To you young people, I'll say, time has come. Wake others up also. And think of this beautiful land that God has given you. Protect it with everything that you have. And may God give you the light and the way to take us forward. Thank you again, Your Excellency, for having come. Jai Hind. Thank you very much, Honorable President, for presenting the awards. And I now have the privilege in requesting Honorable President of India, Sri Pranab Mukherjee, to kindly deliver his inaugural address, please. Dr. Farooq Abdullah, Minister for New and Renewable Energy, 
Dr. R. K. Pachuri, President, Association of Development and Research of Sustainable Habitats, others, and Director General Terry, Sri Amit Kumar, Vice President, others, and Director Terry, Mili Mojumdar, Secretary, come Treasurer, others, and Director Terry, Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I am indeed happy to be present this morning at the opening of the fourth Griho National Conference on Green Design today. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the continuing increase in Indian population and the growth of the Indian economy along with the rapid urbanization has led to enormous demands for buildings. This, in turn, is leading to huge increase in demand for electricity in new and existing buildings. Simultaneously, the diminishing availability of water is becoming a serious challenge. Buildings consume a substantial amount of energy. In 2011-12, the share of construction sector in GDP was about 7.8%. However, the share of electricity consumption by the building sector alone is about 35% of the total electricity.